What do you think, folks? Ah, just kidding. This is my bike. So, here we go. It is a pretty bike, or trike, but... Nope. Alright, I got my... Everything... Fixed. So, I had my brakes done. I had oil change. Oil filter. You know, a complete oil service and a complete brake job. And a brand new battery. Uh, a Honda specific battery. I could go. I could gun it and go. But where am I going to go? Look at all the traffic. I have to slam on my brakes two seconds later. I think I'll just wait. Hopefully I don't have any nails in store. gas situation. I'm a, what, half a tank? Okay, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, I think I'm going to bang a Yui and go around this way. Alright, so, hi folks, Mike Haley 7 here. Today is the 22nd of April. Also known as Hippie Day. Earth Day. 2022. 4, 22, 22. I hope you had a good 420. I know that uh, 420 means marijuana, whatever. Um, I don't smoke marijuana. I don't like to smoke marijuana. I think it's disgusting. But I don't fault anyone else who wants to smoke it. And uh, my friend out in California, he has a special vaporizer box thing. And there, there's no flavor at all to it. There's no negative flavor at all. It's just incredible. I do the biker wave here. And, mm, I do like the edibles, I will say that. I was up in Massachusetts last year and uh, got me a bunch of edibles and really appreciated them, especially since I was, you know, going through all the the hell of losing my mom. So it was quite nice to have that to take the edge off of, you know, all the stuff I was doing. Not to mention the grief, I mean, obviously. That guy waved at me, and I didn't wave at him because I was too busy looking at my other stuff. I didn't even see him until the last second. He probably thinks, oh, that snobby Honda rider. Probably doesn't even know it's a Honda. So that snobby metric rider. Hey, look at that. Huh? <laughs> not too bad. Not too bad. Not too bad, Mikey. This nice. 80 something degrees out here today. 84 on my bike, it says. So, I'm wearing my summer jacket. I planned ahead. All right, so uh, I don't remember what I talked about last time. I think it was something about planning for the future and possible going blind when I'm 60 or after starting at 60 and health issues and all the craziness that's been going on with me. Uh, by the way, that reminds me, shout out to uh, the Smarter Cowboy who uh, is going to be clearing, or he's cleared now. I think he, no clots, so he's able to get his operation now. So Dave, I'm really hoping and praying that you and I both will be back to fitness and happiness as soon as possible and riding. And now I'm thinking I don't want to go back to work. <laughs> oh, this is, this is nice. This is real nice. Let me just enjoy the moment here, folks, for a second here. I need to take it in. Oh, man. This feels good. 
I did not get new tires because my tires were not used enough to get new. Uh, as you know, I go through tires pretty quickly, not because I put a lot of miles on them, but because there's so many freaking nails on the road. Is it this one? Yeah, it's this one. This is the one I want. Alrighty, here we are. Look at me not scraping, huh? <laughs> oh man, I hope you guys are able to see this in beautiful color awesomeness. I don't know why, but in my video I put out most recently, I recorded it in 4K, but when I processed it, it came out all herky jerky. No matter what, and I so I took it down and I reprocessed it. And in both cases, the original file that came out of the processing was herky-jerky. So it wasn't YouTube, it wasn't the upload, it was the actual file itself. And I think it's because maybe when I first put the, the movies in there, it, it says something like, uh, the settings for the video itself are not the same as the settings for the movie studio, and do you want to change or not change? And I can't remember which one, and I, I might have pushed something by accident. So I'll be more careful when I make the edited version of this. Ah, so pretty, so pretty here today, so pretty. I have no idea. Oh, I, I think I got off too early. That's all right, I can go this way too. Actually, this way is probably more pleasant. I'm on Highway 50, heading south from Route 70 in Garner, North Carolina. I do the little swing around thingy when there's a quick break-in because I don't want to get plowed. Unless it's my uncle. Oh, that was sick, Mike. That was sick. <laughs> I'm just kidding. God, calm down, people. Sick and twisted sense of humor. I know that the Brits, for some reason, the Brits are extra, extra, extra sensitive about the whole pedo thing. I've noticed that in watching the media and and talking to Brits. Man, that, that is like a line you do not cross. That's the third rail of British cultures. Don't make any pedo jokes, man, because they are pissed off when they hear that. Drives them nuts. I, I, I guess here it would be what? What would be the, the third rail that you don't, you never touch here? I don't know, 9 11 jokes maybe? I mean, everybody in America is so sensitive about politics now that it's kind of hard to to differentiate which particular thing this week is going to touch a nerve with somebody and make them, you know, either call you a snowflake or, or a, you know, a right-wing nut job or whatever the, the latest term is. I'm not going to listen to you ever again because you have a different political view from me. Like, like believing in science. If I say I believe in science, oh my God, you are lefty liberal. I also believe in the Second Amendment. Oh my God, you're a right-wing nut job. I just lost half of my subscribers to one thing and the other half to the other. So, yay for me. Anyway, bike's running well. Uh, nothing wrong, really. I, I've got my my uh, engine temperature is fine. I'm at 21,129 miles. So that's nice. I uh, m The battery on the bike, uh, I bought the bike in April of 2019. And I left the bike in the garage uh, probably more than I needed to. Sorry, I was trying not to die there. I saying yeah I um you know because I wasn't riding it and it, it, the, the electrical situation in my garage is in disrepair and I need to fix it and I haven't so I have, it's not easy to trickle charge the bike and so yeah, I didn't 
and so the battery died and then I charged it up was able to start it I went to work made a couple of videos rode it around a little bit a couple days and then ended up in the hospital again bike sat there no trickle charge for a long time again battery died again charged it up again fine but I'm thinking you know what the battery's getting old and it's already died twice because it was sitting there without being charged so I'm not gonna play with it I'm not gonna mess around and, and you know run the battery to the very last ounce of energy that I can get out of it screw that I got it replaced so there's that you know what I don't want to have that on here I want to have my nav on here how do I do my nav no 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 how about uh, I got, uh, watch this, it'll get mad at me if I push that button. No? No? Okay. How about the home button? Ah, there you go. Mike's learning how to use his bike again. There we go. Now I can see me going down the road. Careful there, Jonesy. Okay, so anyway... Moose was talking to me this morning about how there's not a whole lot of traditional motovloggers like me making videos currently. Uh, there is road reality. I mention him all the time. Don't forget to click like and subscribe and don't forget to click that bell all icon so that you can get the latest updates on the videos that I don't make. And definitely do that for road reality because you know you gotta go to, go to that you know thumbs up and caress it gently, you know and then get it nice and hard and then give it a wham. And then and then and then, Go to that subscribe button, ask it out on a date. Make sure you take it to a nice place, don't be cheap. Don't take it to Red Lobster. You know, get a nice meal at like TGI Fridays or Outback Steakhouse. You know, wine and dine that subscribe button. You know, get it nice and good. Nice and good and ready for you. And then you just, you know, wham away on it when it's time. So you're subscribed. And then, and then, and then that bell you know just gonna take that bell down and put it over your head put it right over your head and then just go dang and that way you'll be notified for all the videos that come out uh, as a general rule I do that to every single video I watch um, for every single person I ever watch so I've got like a gazillion subscriptions and bells going off all the time my uh, my computer my phone and my head all ring kind of like a swish watch switch clock shop Glockenspiel, clang, clang, clang. I'm kidding. I, I'm kidding about all of this. I hope you realize that. Anyway, love you, John. But uh, you know, it's. I, I wonder. This is a good question for the motor vlog today. Do you think that the traditional um, low tech? I guess it's not really low tech because I am using a a camera that does 4K. So what are they? Low production value. Let's put it that way. Do you think that low production value moto vlogs like mine, where just some rando dude, that's what the young kids call it now, rando, just some random guy sticking a camera on his helmet and blabbing at you for 10, 15, 20 minutes, is that going away? Is that something people just aren't interested in doing anymore? Like the silent films of old? Am I of that era? And 70 years from now, people will look back and they'll do like a retrospective. Remember back when people used to stick cameras on their helmets and make videos? They called them moto vlogs. A video log that they recorded on their motorcycle. And people actually watched it. And it was a very, what, what, what would you call it? Grassroots. I, I think that's what you could call this. This is a grassroots kind of a non-corporate thing, especially at the beginning. You know, when I first started, there was no sponsorship, there was no Patreon, there was no, um, there was no ability to make money. There was no AdSense or partnerships or none of that when I first started. As a matter of fact, I was surprised they didn't charge you to put videos up there. Of course, now they're charging me to watch videos without the ads, because I hate the ads. They put so many of them now, and you can't click past a lot of them so I pay the 15 bucks 16 bucks whatever it is 
and you probably had to if you didn't pay the 16 bucks you had to watch and I had to watch my video too because you know what I'm making that dollar baby that cheddar I'm making that money that whole hundred and thirty nine dollars every six weeks money yeah baby I'm in the money now and buy me a Cadillac or something it reminds you of this uh, joke this this guy walks over to this lady at the bar staring at him and he says yo baby I saw you looking at me from across the bar and she says yeah I was he says what'd you see what'd you like she says your fly's open so he looks down and sees the fly over and says oh you seen my Cadillac in the in the garage she says no motherfucker I seen a broke down old Toyota with two flat tires what I seen <laughs> Oh, that was good. That was a good comeback. Sorry for the the language. If you're new to the channel, <laughs> bye. If you're sitting there with your grandkid on your lap, come here, Jimmy. Let's sit down here and watch a good old-fashioned moto vlog. This, this guy is a salt-of-the-earth kind of guy. Makes these great videos. He's very, very... Uh, fun to listen to and he's articulate and he's thoughtful he talks about politics and philosophy and history and all these interesting things and his family stories are fun so let's sit down little Jimmy and enjoy this evening instead of Lawrence Welk we're gonna put on my Kaylee Sevens moto vlogs and we're just gonna sit back with the popcorn and you can have a lollipop and a ginger ale and we will just watch these videos from my Kaylee Seven and then 10 seconds later, pedo jokes. And then he's using the mother effer. And, oh, and the kid's like, daddy, granddad? What's a beep, 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 beep. And why did, it, why did the uncle do the beep, beep, beep to the kid? Beep, 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 beep. Like, um, click. Jimmy, let's never discuss this. We'll never talk of this day again. <laughs> uh, I'm in a rare form today, folks, rare form. Happy to get my bike back. All right, so what else is going on with my Kaylee 7? Let's talk about some of the recent happenings. So uh, I got my, my, the stuff that was in me for my procedures and whatnots has been removed. Uh, I removed the supra pubic catheter from my belly above my, it's right, it's right over by the pubic area above the, above your junk. And I, deflated the ball inside there in my bladder and pulled that puppy out and, and you know put pressure on it to stop the leakage and whatever this and that and it's not infected everything's fine I'm good didn't have to go to the doctor to do it which was surprising because the doctor said you can take it out in a week and I'm like don't have to come back in no you don't have to if you want to you can like so you can charge me eighty dollars to do something I can do at home he told me just take the syringe stick it on the, the extra thingy suck out the the whatever liquid was in there to hold that ball and then you just uh take the thing out okay fine so i did 84 degrees in the sun and i'm wishing that this jacket did not have these black parts on it even though it's a mesh jacket and all that oh well So that part's done. Uh, my stitches are healing very well. Uh, I did take a picture because I, I had some bleeding and some other issues going on. And so I took a picture and sent it to the doctor over the weekend, last weekend. And let me tell you, when I looked at that picture and I zoomed in on it, whoo, it, it kind of looked like a cross between the mouth of the Guild Stage Navigator from the movie Dune in 1984 cross between that and maybe when the uh, the predator opened his mouth and you know with the with the hooks and stuff it was kind of horrifying like that like that's one ugly mother anyway so uh i sent that picture off and he said yeah yeah that that's you look fine everything's healing well just keep doing what you're doing and i'm sitting here going D i'm traumatized by what i have seen Please, God, tell me that there's something wrong and you need to sew me up more or something. Nope. Everything's fine. Okay.
so I'm feeling much better looking much better uh, haven't really put on a whole lot of weight thank God I'm being laid up like I am I'm trying to eat more vegetable stuff I hope I didn't just hit a nail <sighs> yeah, every time I feel a bump in the road you know I'm driving I'm traveling in the tire lane you know where the tires go except for this guy and um, if I feel a little bump I'm like god damn it I probably hit a nail I have the the tire insurance on this bike, so I'm good. Anyway. And as you know, I've, I've gotten into uh, the Stranglers, the, the British band, the Stranglers. I've been watching all the videos about them and their history and all this. And they, they've been around since 1974. September 11th, 1974, basically, is when they trademarked the name the Stranglers. And it was because of the Boston Strangler. That, that was the, the talk of the town back then. Everybody was talking about the Boston Strangler back in 74. And, and they screwed up a gig because they were known for fighting and getting in trouble and, and mouthing off. And so they ruined, you know, they pissed off yet another promoter or got kicked out of yet another pub. And so they, the, lead, the lead, not the lead, the bass guitarist, J.J. Burnell, says, well, Stranglers have done it again. And so that name kind of stuck. So there you go. Anyway, love the bass on that uh, on, on all their songs, especially the early ones. And so I, I got into that real big time. And I have a bass guitar. I've got a, um, a Fender American Performer uh, Precision Bass, which is basically what he had when he first started out uh, in the band. And that's awesome. Uh, I also have a Yamaha, not a Yamaha, this is a Yamaha? No, no, it's a, yeah, it's a Yamaha. I have a Yamaha TRB blah, 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 basic $259. So I got one at work, I got one at home, and I'm playing, if there's a, like a, a staff meeting on Teams, I'm listening to the Teams meeting, but I'm also practicing my finger placement on the frets. Learning, you know, the Fender app I've downloaded and I'm learning lessons from that and watching YouTube and try not to overwhelm myself with music theory and other things because it's easy to do. You get too, uh, you, you want to do too much too soon. So I'm just taking it one step at a time. I cannot be uh, anywhere near competent or viewable until you know two or three years from now i'm thinking anyway so i've been doing that and really enjoying it i got my pick i know a lot of people play the bass with the fingers and I, i'm learning that too but uh jj brunell when he's playing that the sound that he gets from playing his bass is that from the pick and the way he attacks the the string and the actual gauge of the string the maker of the string and I, I know all that stuff I'm, I've got an order for that I'm going to be changing my strings out to get that same sound because um, I just love that that kind of bass sound and it's it's not just bass it's it's kind of like a powerful mid-range jangly just angry sound to the bass and it's very dominant uh, because JJ is uh, kind of an alpha male kind of guy did this uh, really intense kind of karate uh, his whole life it does he's a seventh degree black belt or something now and he's known for kicking people's asses which is kind of contradictory to me because it's for defense so I don't understand how you're kicking everybody's ass whatever anyway he's really cool and he's really smart and he's really talented and he's inspired me so there you go I'm playing the bass and I don't know how far I'll get I'm gonna try to go as far as I can make this a thing because as I go older and older and this becomes less and less possible po possibly because of the eyeballs one good thing about the bass is, that's different from this is you know I progress in this and I get to the point where I'm leaning really far over into corners as you know scraping a lot maximizing my apexes uh, trail braking looking through the corner uh, you know applying the, the the gas the same you know at the right time and all that studying that a lot and, and improving a lot to the point now where if I want to raise my my skill level in that kind of riding 
I really should be doing a, a trail, uh, what do they call that? Track day. Track days are, you know, sure. I'm spending money on bass guitar and, and all the stuff that goes with it. And I could be spending that same money on a trailer and then another trailer to live, you know, to sleep in when I'm at the track because you're going to, you know, stay at a hotel or there and get a track bike and, and learn how to maintain it, this, that, the other. And I'm spending money either way. But if I flub a note on the bass if I'm playing a song, I'm not going to break my ankle. I'm not going to break my back or die. Uh, if I'm going 120 miles an hour around, you know, and I screw up somehow and the bike throws me, I do a high side at 120, I'm dead. If not dead, I'm probably seriously injured. I know they get the suits, the $1,000, $2,000 slidey suits. <sighs> no, I'm getting too old for that crap. So bass guitar it is. And I still have my baritone saxophone. And I, I still plan on continuing my practice and my lessons with that. I want to stretch the musical muscles. My sister, uh, she used, well, she kind of still is, but she really was until very recently uh, a part time professional musician in a band. Uh, she was singing. When she was younger, she was playing guitar, and I think she still can, but she's mostly singing in this band. And I think she's had to to stop, I, I guess. I don't know. I'm not sure if the band is still performing. But uh, it's in my family, you know? One of my siblings does it. Oh, I remember growing up, they used to sing all the time and they had the guitar. She had like one of those double string, everything, every string was double. She did a lot of John Denver tunes back then. My dad used to play guitar and he sang. He could do a good Bing Crosby, man, or, or an Elvis. I mean, he was amazing. So, yeah, I, um, I like music. My grandfather on my dad's side, he never knew his dad, but I found out later on that my father's father was a painter, a professional painter, and he also painted, like, landscapes and stuff. But he painted signs on all the local shops and on office doors and stuff, you know, like Dr. So-and-so's office, you know, that fancy on the glass. That was my, my uh, grandfather would put his arm up against the thing and he would do like this, you know. So, anyway, there's that. Ah, oh, Jesus. This red light is sucking the life out of me. God. I just had a, a thought. So that, that car right there, I know you can't see it. I'll read it to you. It's a, it's a Honda Civic, and it says, this car is GPS tracked. And then it's got some other thing, diversity certified, which made me think, well, maybe that sticker's on there because the guy works, or the lady, I don't know who it is, the person works part-time for Uber or something, and so that's why. I don't know why it's GPS tracked. But it made me think, Uber, right? You can Uber as a car. Can you Uber as a bike, too? I know you probably could do Uber Eats. But, like, could you Uber people on a motorcycle? You know, bring a helmet or something? I imagine a liability would probably make it impossible. Something to think about. Not that I want to do it. I'm just wondering if, if that's a thing ever. Here I go again, going for the clutch. For 
years now I was talking about how there's going to be a big highway coming through here and I don't know if you can see this crane very well but uh, man that guy's so stinky I can smell him through his vehicle anyway there's the crane and they've diverted the road here to go around it it used to go straight through here now it goes around and as you can see probably as I'm looking at the road you're hopefully seeing this uh, they're building um, an underpass or no they're building an overpass and the road's going to go the the highway is going to go under this road I think yeah I think that's how it's going to be yeah 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 so the this the main drag will keep going straight over and then the highway will go straight under go that way to the left of me That's all highway coming. It's toll road. Do you guys have this in, in where you live where there, you don't have to stop at a toll booth and put change in a thingy anymore? No more throwing coins at a basket or talking to a human or getting a ticket and then get, you know giving the ticket to somebody else later on. None of that. Um, and the easy pass thing, you know, you could stick in your windshield. But now in North Carolina, all of them are both easy pass and they take a picture of your... Uh, your vehicle license tag and I have an account so it just debits from my account on that thing and they send me a picture and a notification and all that so I can see my bike there was this guy he had re retired I think is the word retired on his plate and apparently somebody else had a copy of his plate like 15 states away and they were going through all these tolls and he was getting all these charges and I think it was New York was trying to tell him that he owed all this money it's like look I've never been to New York that's obviously not my car you can see in the picture it's not his car but it is that plate same state and everything but um, he finally he had to call the um, I think he had to call his DMV in his state, and his DMV contacted the New York DMV and made him stop it. Like, stop bothering our citizen. That's pretty scary. My rage probably would not do well with that. That's all I'm saying. Okay, I'm at school again, and I'm going to go inside and uh, answer some emails. Make sure everything is secure. I don't know if I'll practice a little bit on my on my secret work guitar, or if I'll go home and practice on my my nice guitar at home. Not, not a guitar. It's not a guitar. It is. It's a bass guitar. You don't call it a guitar. You call it a bass. Oh, fine. God, everybody's got their their snobbiness on everything, right? Alright, it's my Kaylee 7. I'll talk to you later.